so this this you has scald and you can see quite a shiny surface to the skin in between the two digits and it's quite pink and inflamed because there is foot rot on this farm I would treat this as though it was foot rot so I would give her an injection and spray all four feet as well whilst we caught her and what we hope the injection will do is catch if bacteria have already started to get into the skin between uh, the, the skin here and the horn which would then eventually lead to underrunning the horn then the injection would kill off those bacteria inside the sheep and the spray that we put on will kill off the bacteria on the outside of the sheep so hopefully she should get better and she should be less infectious to the rest of her flock mates so for a long acting injection we have to inject into the muscle uh, because the antibiotic is slowly absorbed from the muscle over two days and what we do with this injection because it's quite an irritant injection as we put it into two sites one on either side one in either leg when we put the needle in we withdraw very slightly just to make sure we're not in a blood vessel and we use the front of the leg where there are no major nerves And if we move to this foot, it's actually really quite hot when I touch it. And we can see that foot rot is starting in this foot. This space is really very swollen. And the hair has gone from a lot of the space. It's a shame that you can't feel what I'm feeling because up her foot, I can feel that it's swollen and quite sore for her and it's really quite hot as well to hold and we can see this grey pastiness towards the back of the foot and also down the side of the horn here just starting to underrun a little bit at the back there and it has that very characteristic smell of foot rot and in comparison with the other foot it is more swollen and a little bit hotter so I would give her an injection and spray all four feet as well whilst we caught her we can see what can happen when foot rot's left untreated there's an, a lot of loose horn here um, and quite a, a lot of damage and we can see that sort of wall horn has um, bent away as well. Had she been treated earlier a lot of this wouldn't have happened um, and at this stage it's worth once she's been treated for, for this foot for, to have another inspection in a week's time if that's possible and just check that none of this loose horn needs to be taken away. CODD is contagious ovine digital dermatitis. It's a relatively new infection in sheep and we don't have it on the farm where we'd be looking at live sheep today. When you see the disease, uh, it's very graphic and even young lambs can be affected and you see that the whole of the horn can drop off really in a matter of days. Now the reason this farm doesn't have it is that they won't have bought it in and the, the, the best thing that farmers can do at the moment is to practice very good biosecurity and make sure that they don't buy sheep from farms which have CODD and that will mean asking the farmer because you can't just look at the feet and assume that the, because the feet are healthy that the sheep aren't bringing this disease with them. 
Once it's on a farm, farmers have tried various treatments. They've tried antibiotic foot baths, um, antibiotic injection, and um, various other things. What seems to happen is that not a lot is very effective when sheep are very severely diseased. Probably um, the long-term antibiotic, uh, long-acting antibiotic is the best treatment and then allowing sheep time to recover. It's best not to trim away all of that loose horn because there is so much loose horn that you will be leaving sheep with no horn left on their foot at all, which will take them months and months to recover from. And the, the only small comfort I think we have for farmers at the moment is that for most farmers, the next year, the second year after they've had CODD, they see CODD in a few sheep, but not in many sheep. Two lesions that are closely related in sheep are lesions that occur at the white line. Now the white line is where the sole horn joins the wall horn and it's a particularly vulnerable area because the horn has to be quite stretchy and bendy at that site. And two things can happen. One is that uh, stones and thorns can get into the white line and as they go in they can take in bacteria with them and form an abscess. And so what we see in sheep is maybe a very hot foot to the touch. The sheep is very, very lame on it. And eventually what will happen is that the pus will break out at the top of the foot. This might be gray or it might be a bloody looking pus. And the sheep is a lot less lame at that point because uh, the pressure has been released from, from where that pus was. So um, the treatment for a sheep like that is to make sure the pus can drain out. And to do that, you might need to make a little hole in the bottom of the foot or remove the stone or the thorn if you can see it. There's no need to take away all the horn along the side of the wall of the foot because that's going to take many months to regrow. Um, and then an antibiotic injection to cure up the infection. If you give the injection before the pus is out, then you may find that the abscess reforms because there still might be something in there causing the abscess. So it's worth making sure that the foot can drain before you do the treatment. And the second thing that we see around the white line is shelly hoof. Shelly hoof occurs where the wall horn separates from the sole horn and we end up with a, a pocket where mud and stones can get up inside the horn. And this pocket itself can cause pain just because you've got um, a large amount of pressure from stones going up inside the, uh, the horn that's separated out from the wall. Now, a couple of treatments that people have tried. One is to clear out anything that's in there and use hoof putty, which you can get from a, an equine merchant, and you pack the pocket and as the hoof putty and the horn grows down, you find that the, the, um, the sheep will become sound and it will mend okay. A more traditional treatment is just to trim away the horn to make sure that there isn't an area where the mud can get stuck and impacted into the pocket. For either of these, it's very important not to trim through um, to sensitive tissue again. And quite often these sheep with shelly hoof aren't lame at all. There are other things that we can do at some times of year which really do help to make a difference, particularly in preventing the spread of foot rot between sheep. At housing and at turnout and at weaning, it's a very good idea to pull out the lame sheep and run them in a separate group until they're sound. A particular reason at housing that makes that important is that if you put one sheep with foot rot into a group of sheep and they go into a lovely warm, damp bedding, the foot rot bacteria can multiply and very, very soon there'll be lots and lots of lame sheep in that group. And then you've got a, a dreadful job trying to manage lame sheep all through the winter until turnout. So separation at housing is a, a really, really important thing to do. Similarly, if you separate at turnout, when you're turning out ewes with young lambs, make sure only the sound ewes go out. And that will stop lameness spreading between the ewes whilst you've got young lambs at foot when it's very difficult to catch and treat. And finally at weaning, when it's a very good opportunity to really work with the flock and work with a, a lame group of sheep separate from the sound group. And at other times of year, this rapid response, this treatment of individual lame sheep, all of those together will help to keep levels of lameness down. For farmers who have got on top of foot rot in their flock, they view it as one of the major achievements and the most important things to have done. They see using better condition, they see lambs that grow away, 
and uh, have good bloom. They often don't see that scald epidemic that you see in lambs in the summer and they don't go out every morning and see lame sheep and the combination of that feeling that your flock looks good together with the increased profitability from rapid growth um, and not needing to bring the flock in week after week and um, do a lot of maintenance is something that uh, I think many farmers would really feel is what they want to achieve.